So our project is to develop a, a method to image it, optinary function and the pathology directly from multi-human. Optinary is a vital uh, uh, tissue uh, transmitting a uh, visual information from the retina to the brain. If optinary injury usually lead to impaired visual function or even a visual loss. And it's commonly affected in a very various disease and injury. For example, glaucoma and optinuritis, you know, other you know, two diseases, they you know, commonly affect the optic nerve. A clinical assessment of visual function, uh, it, it's convenient and very useful, but you know, even though you can locate site of injury, okay, you can de detect the impairment of vision, but it has a problem, to, you know, cannot, you know, de de uh, determine whether the injury is inflammation, demyelination, or axonal injury. And then it's really difficult to determine if it's axonal injury or if it's an irreversible axonal loss. So image of the nerve is needed, and it's a very important in terms of in the patient management. There are many different methods uh, to image your optic nerve, and uh, one of the most one of the most common use uh, technique is the optic OCT. It's a light based image technique, but unfortunately, you only you know can image the, everything in the intraocular, so it doesn't reach out to you know, the the later part of optic nerve. So one of the, to image optic nerve, the most you know uh, effective method would be MRI because it have no limitation of penetrations. Conventional T1 and T2 where the image can detect the issues, but unfortunately, it would not be able to tell you the difference of underlying pathology. So the diffusion test image was developed. They would allow you know, one to uh, assess, assess a demyelination and a sonal injury. Unfortunately, these measurements are also are confounded by uh, the presence of a sonal loss or inflammations. So the, the goal for the current study is to develop a diffusion based spectral image to image optic nerve function in the pathology. So, what's a diffusion based spectral image? You can see here is a cartoon of an image of also representing uh, an image of also you know, containing optic nerve. So, where we can see you know, the consists of uh, demyelinated axons, the intake axons, and the axonal uh, in injured axons. And then you have a lot of inflammatory cells present and then you know, interact on the space here. So if we do a diffusion basic, diffusion basic spectrum image, basically what we're trying to do is we, we, we will detect, uh, decompose you know, all the signal contribution from each component and give you a specific you know, image, you know, DBS that model the signal patterns. For example, we can, we can, we can model intake axon with demanding the axon which increase the actual diffusivity can be much fatter here. And then with the you know, injured axon, we can you know, shorter the actual diffusivity. And then in the cells, you know, the less diffusion, more restricted diffusion. And then with the, you know, the edema or extracellular you know, interaxonal space will be you know, you know, isotropic you know, you know, bigger diffusivities. The truth for the DTM model, basically you have to take the average of all these effects and to show you, you know, the, the presentation, the shape and size of the, this, this, this tensor for, for, to guess what happens. So it's insufficient. That's why DBSI is much better methods. And it will show you how it works. And this is a, 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 the first application we do in the EAE mouse model. It's a multiple sclerosis model. So what we have is want to detect a sonic injury and a demyelination in this model. So what you can see here, this is a, the same animal, your same nerve. We do it before you know, immunization and then you know, an onset and then you know, two days after. You can see that the that, that <clears throat> actual diffusivity of DTI look, to, to, to look at some injury, you can see a significant decrease actual diffusivity. But in contrast to a DPS side, you know, you, you, it's more accurate at the reflection of the injury. Is You can see that the injury was not prominent until a second time point. And similarly, in DTI on you know, radio diffusivity, you can see you know the, the increase in your know, uh, demyelination, and then you know deep, uh, uh, DBSI can tell you it's not a significant base, also it's present. And then you know, DBSI were able, able to show you what happened in the inflammatory component. So look at cellularity, you can see slightly increase over time, and then edema you can see a significant increase in the second time point of edema. 
And if we take a look at the what's the, uh, the group after result, one can see here, a DTL can suggest, you know, Actually, injured early, it's first time point, and, and onset, and then you know, gets get worse, and demyelination, you know, in the second time point. And they look at FA the overall that the combined effect of the actual radio deficit, you can see, is the most significant effect, you know, uh, in the time two. But look at DBSI, you know, actual deficit is such a generous you know, no injury in the same at, at the onset, but significantly injured in, 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 in the second uh, two days later. And then you can see here on the radio deficit, look at demyelination. There's no demyelination at the time point, and even the second time point, not significant. If you look at it in your overall uh, fiber you know, uh, fraction and isotropy, you can see, you know, again, also indicating you know, the second time we get you know, the more, more significant the damage to the axons. And then we can see this you know, inflammatory component, you can see here, is the, we can see you know, significant vasogenic so edema increases at the onset and get worse at the second time point. And you can see the cellularity increase you know, in significant the first time, but there's a trend, but the second time, we're getting more significant increase. And then you know, another thing very important that we want to do with the DBSI is you know, we want to see if we can quantify you know, the external loss. As we can see in the EAE models, it is inflammatory, you know, cause the axon, the optic nerve to swell. You can see that, you know, the swelling of, of the, of the uh, optic nerve. But it was just, you know, swelling, and, and we, we, we are able to use in TBSI to see the, the extent of axons, you know, axonal loss. So you can, axonal volume basically is the equivalent of a technology axonal count. So you can see we have the significant 10 to 15 percent drop in a, in a, in axon uh, uh, axonal count, and this axonal volume you know also is you know linear correlated with the visual acuity in in, in mice. Okay, so so this is just you know the DPS I just can do look at the you know, imagery or uh, uh, optic nerve pathology. How about the function? So we can do using a similar you know, diffusion diffusion imagery to see the functional exchange. So this is the, the control and the EMI school really represented image shows this. In the baseline, I can see radio diffusivity is low, but once it turn on the visual stimulation, it, it decreases even more further. So you, you, even lower, but then you stop, it will go back to normal. You can see here. Okay, you can you drop a 25% significant decrease and then return to normal once it stops stimulation. It's good. In contrast, look at in, in a EAE, the baseline is higher because you have the demyelination and inflammation, and you have stimulation. You do have you know, uh, uh, decrease in radio diffusivity, and it does increase uh, returning to no, you know, close to no, not entirely to normal, but it did increase. But you look at the overall result here, as you can see, you can see it about 7% drop, but it did not reach its statistical significance, but then you know, come back to almost it. It does have a trend. You can see the functional you know, uh, uh, response. It, uh, affected in this um, EAE mice. And then what does this you know, uh, 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 diffusion MI signal change means? And then we, so we, we performed you know, our perfused isolated frog sighting nerve to see can the extent of decreasing radio diffusion upon the electrical stimulation is linear proportional to the number of impulse we, we give. So suggesting you know, this is indeed a marker of a, a nerve activation. So then we try to do this, you know, see how we can translate to the human. Here we can see in the human, we do, you know, for anatomic image, we can identify where the optic nerve is. And then we'll uh, to ensure we see, you know, the, the cross section of perpendicular to the nerve, you know, every time to repeat, repeatable. Then we do this, you know, uh, careful planning. And then we do reduce the field of view to see, focus into where the optic nerve is. The reason for this is because when we do diffusion MRI, we need to do echo planar imaging. It's really very susceptible to you know, multiple you know, uh, artifacts. So we needed to do a field of view to see where the optic nerve is. I can see, and once we do this field of view here, we reduce it and then we can see these nerves right here. And based on this image, we can perform uh, DBSI you know, uh, uh, modeling. Here is a DBSI result. On, on one example on the multiple sclerosis. We can see in the cellularity, okay, DPS I can show, you know, it doesn't really increase in MS in this particular patient, look at it, even if it's a bit decreased. Look at edema, you do see, you know, optic nerve have a significant amount of edema and as on of densities, you can see you have decreased as on the density, such as maybe you have as on loss. And then you know, as on the injury, because the DTI and the DPS I can show that DTI doesn't show it. Okay, obvious, but the DBSI, you can see that 
axonal injury. In this particular mouse, it looks like uh, the peripheral region is a decrease, it looks like increase in size. So in average, it may not sort of change. So this needs a further investigation. And look at demyelination. You can see you have increased in your, your uh, 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 radiative receding in TBSI, but even more the increase in, in uh, uh, DTI. So suggest you, know, you, know, you may have your, your uh, demyelination and may or may not have axonal injury in this, this patient. So we look at this in your, in your group average results you can see here, compare MS patient and the glycoma patient here. In a DTI radiodiversity is increasing in radio, uh, MS patients. And then the DPS that shows you know, that, that increase in both glycoma and MS patients. The most interesting thing here is you know, the axial diversity does, did not change among these two group. The suggestion is that you know, in these residual axons may not be injured, they're looking like normal. And then you know, the, the DTI <laughs> showed a more variable, but showing a similar trend. So what we can do here is again, can look at you know, our, our, um, the inflammation and axonal you know, loss. You know, you can see that you know, there's no cellularity change and that there's a slight increase in your vestigenic edema or maybe you know, tissue void. And then you still see the, the decrease in as uh, density, axonal volume. So this axon counts lower you know, in MS and in gynecoma. Okay. So one of the things that we are interested to do is to look at you know, the natural history of disease progressions. This is an example of MS patient undergoing you know, you know, their, their individual you know, respective you know, uh, treatment. And what we have here you can see, we have a patient image three times. Three time. the first, after the first image, we, six months later, we do a second image. And then a year later, we do a third image. I can see this a healthy control distribution in DBSI. Actual DBSI, you can see, basically, we, we see this uh, 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 external injury progress in this you know, three time point. And the most interesting thing here is, you know, in the first time point, we see a, a radiative facility is high, such a demyelination. But then, since it is, this patient are all undergoing a treatment, this could be could reflect the treatment effect of demyelination, but we are not sure. Okay, but at the most side we needed it. But we can see this vasogenic edema is increasing this you know, over time. And the most interesting thing here is we do see a very significant axonal loss over time. Your first time point will be lower than normal, but then it progressively decreases. So this suggests, you know, you know, maybe the axonal loss is a you know, you know, primary country, could, could contribute to the progressive disease or uh, uh, secondary progressive MS. And similar to a look at the functional MR you know, in, in a human, it's also doable. We can see that we compare DBSI and the DTI because the same data set can analyze by the two, the two model. We can see that do a DTI, you know, it really doesn't you know, see any changes here. Do the DPSI, you can see you know, uh, uh, some changes, okay? And you look at overall the, the, the numbers, you can see radio diffusivity decrease upon you know, uh, uh, turn on the visual stimulation and then you know, did not recover you know, uh, 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 as expected. Okay, maybe it will take longer because this stimulation is pretty long and pretty you know, stressful. And then look at and the interesting thing here is we did not see in the animal, but we do see in the in the human is the actual diversity also decrease. Again, it, it also did not re, uh, recover in, 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 a, in a, when you turn it off. This is in the control. Okay, and then we apply this in the MS patient. MS is more compliant because they are younger, uh, and uh, and the glaucoma, you know, this paradigm doesn't work. So how we have can see in the in the actual diversity upon stimulation, control decreased, and then you did not you know, uh, re return to normal, but the MS, you can see, de you know, uh, decrease egg response and then come back. Similarly, the radio deficit, you also see the response and then it's not really healthy control. The MS is sort of, you know, similar, similar trend as we see in a healthy control. So, so just we could use this in MS. And the most interesting thing here is that DTI doesn't work. So, such, so this really needed to look at DBSI after you isolate all the surrounding signal, the confounding factors, you know, to affecting your, your, your signal changes. So, you know, after this study, you know, we have what we got so far, we want to do a future study we want to do is we want to develop, you know, you know a more friendly uh, protocol to, to do the functional measurements. So, you know, hopefully we can include more uh, our, our patients. And then we want to re refine the DBSM model so we can improve the sensitivity, including you know, into a model. 
Another thing very important here is that we realized uh, recently, you know, that, you know, if there's a sonar loss, it's unlikely we can regenerate. Because the regeneration, the, 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 the progress is slow and a very short distance. So maybe we, we should focus on uh, preserving you know, the, the, the residual axons. So we are trying to see if we can mount, remodel the DBSI to allow it to estimate the extent of injured versus non-injured axons in the optinerve. So this is uh, the, the project. Thank you very much.